The Amazing Mr. Malone. Operator. Operator. Get me the office of John J. Malone. The National Broadcasting Company presents The Amazing Mr. Malone. An exciting half hour of mystery starring George Petrie as the lawyer whose practice before every type of bar has become a legend. Our locale is the city of Chicago, the time, the present, and the hero of these weekly adventures, the amazing Mr. Malone. Malone's the name, John J. Malone, attorney and counselor at law. Tonight in our study of the cliché, let's explore the possibilities of haste maketh waste. As a case in point, I give you Dutch Schneider. Dutch is the solid-looking citizen behind the mahogany desk at the Belvedere Club. He's a gambler by profession, but that doesn't mean he takes chances. No, Dutch likes to play it nice and safe. That probably explains why he stares with obvious disbelief at a light on his desk which flicks on and off with appropriate sound effects. O'Neill. Yeah? What's going on out there? Just what you think, Dutch. It's a raid. They're doing any damage? Well, can't you hear it? No. I'll take my word for it. They're playing awful rough. I'm glad they're having fun. Who's in charge? I am, Mr. Schneider. Never mind, O'Neill. Do you want to see me? Yes. Uh, what's your name, officer? Uh, Brooks. Lieutenant Sidney Brooks. Why wasn't I notified of this raid? Uh, would you mind repeating that, please? I asked why I wasn't warned. Your boys must have done at least $100,000 worth of damage. Oh, easy. You know who's going to pay for it? Who? You. On my salary, don't be silly. O'Neill. What is it, Dutch? Get me Arthur Hall on the phone. Oh, now I get it. Is Arthur Hall your lawyer? That's right. <laughs> you know, this is the funniest thing I've heard yet. You think so? I know so. So he clipped you too, huh? I'm surprised at you, Dutch. What are you talking about? I'll bet Arthur sold your bill of goods he could keep us out of your hair if you paid off to him. Well? Well, he was kidding you. Arthur Hall has as much influence in Chicago as my brother-in-law. And even with me on the force, he can't get himself arrested. Well, if Hall was bluffing, why wasn't my club knocked off before? Oh, you're just lucky, Dutch. We're understaffed. We didn't get around to you. I see. I can't get over it. Arthur Hall clipping a hip character like you. You're right, Lieutenant. It is funny. But you'll pardon me if I don't laugh. Right now, the joke seems to be on me. That you, Arthur? Yes. You're late. I was detained at the office, Peggy. Why didn't you answer your phone? Dutch Schneider's been trying to reach you all evening. Oh, uh, did he call here? Mm hmm. You know, Arthur, I got the idea he was a little annoyed with you. Oh, well, what did he say? It wasn't what he said, darling. It was the way he said it. Listen, Peg, I, uh, gotta leave town for a few days. Oh, really? Yeah, something, something's just come up. Remember the, uh, Morris estate? Arthur, you don't have to explain. You know I trust you implicitly when you're leaving. I'm taking the super chief to Los Angeles. Oh, that explains it. That explains what? Why, they called and confirmed your reservation to St. Louis. Oh, well, I uh, must have made a mistake. Well, obviously. I... Well, have fun, darling. If there's anything I can do for you here... Uh, there is. I, I want you to sign these papers. What are they? Uh, nothing to be concerned about. Here, on this first line here. Uh, uh, didn't you once tell me never to sign anything without reading it? Well... This is to acknowledge that I, Peggy Hall, here... Now, my... look, uh, Peggy... Arthur, you... I'm shocked. Utterly and completely shocked. Well, I couldn't sign anything like this. If I did, all the bonds and money you put in my name would revert back to you. It's my money and bonds, isn't it? Oh, sweetheart, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't want to see you penniless in St. Louis. Uh, pardon, Los Angeles. Suppose I write out a check for $25. Now, listen, Peggy. There's no use arguing, Arthur. I think I'm being very generous. After all, I'm not obliged to give you anything. Ah, you dirty little double cross. Just what do you think you're doing? Uh, it's not nice, Arthur. Huh? I said that's not nice. Hello, Peggy. Hello. What, Dutch, what are you doing here? Oh, there are a couple of things I want to take up with you. 
Would you mind leaving us alone for a little while, Mrs. Hall? It would be a pleasure. Uh, no, Peggy. Come back. That's a swell girl you've got there. Now, listen, Dutch, I, I know what you're going to say. That's good. Then I won't have to say it. Uh, it was a slip-up. You see, I, I've been on the phone all day. Those boys had no right to raid your place. But they did. Well, I've got an appointment to talk to the commissioner tomorrow. I don't see how you're going to manage it. Well, what do you mean? Well, to talk properly, you should have teeth. And comes tomorrow, Arthur, I don't think you're going to have many left. Oh. Come in. Are you George Kelk? Mm-hmm. I'm Arthur Hall. I spoke to you on the phone. Oh, yes. I'll be with you in a minute. I've got to hear this record. Oh, now, look, Calc, I'm a busy man. I... If you're in a hurry, Mr. Hall, you better take your business elsewhere. Well? Ah, uh, wait. Hmm, that's the ticket. Hmm, it's pretty, isn't it? It's Debussy. Yeah. You know what's responsible for most of the troubles in this world, Mr. Hall? People assign the wrong value to things. Now, take music, for example. That's important. Because there is a common denominator. Look, Calc, I didn't come here for a lecture. There's no extra charge. All right, Hall, what can I do for you? Want to do a job for me? Not particularly. What? I'm a craftsman, Mr. Hall. I only accept commissions I like. I'll pay you $500. You're not even in my register. You'll have to go higher. Thousand? It's a little better. Have the money right on you now? Well, yes, but it's, it's all I have at the moment. It's enough for me. All right. Two, four, six, eight. Now, what's the name of your party? Dutch Schneider. You know him? Only by reputation. He the one who bounced you around? That's my business. As you say, Mr. Hall, that's your business. So if you'll allow me, I'll be getting down to mine. Just a minute. Yes? Are you Dutch Schneider? That's right. Kelk's my name. Georgie Kelk. Kelk? Haven't I heard that name before? Well, I don't know. Have you? Why, sure. You're the... Well, go on, Dutch. You won't hurt my feelings. I'd rather not take any chances. Frankly, it won't make much difference. Sit down. You mind if I smoke? Mm -mm. Here, try my brand. The king size. Well, if nothing else, it'll give me a little more time. A match? Sure. Catch? Thanks. Well, where do I get it, Kelk? What's wrong with right here? Aren't you afraid of the noise? If you didn't notice the silencer on this baby. Excuse me for trying to tell you your business. It's quite all right. You don't mind talking? Not at all. How'd you find me here, anyway? Oh, it took me a couple of hours, but I managed. What is this, a uh, hideaway? Yes. Mm -hmm. Nice place. Oh, your phonograph? Mm-hmm. Whose records? No, mine. See, so you go in for the classical. Uh, whose album is that you've got on the Tchaikovsky piano concerto? Rubenstein. Ever hear Horowitz play? I like Rubenstein's better. It's got a lot more fire. Oh, you're out of your mind. No one can touch Horowitz when it comes to execution. You ought to know. <laughs> hey, it's all right. Say, tell me something, Dutch. Why is it the nice guys always get it? There's no reason why they should. Look, Kelk, I don't want to insult you, but uh, can't we talk this over? Mm, I'm afraid not. Well, I know who put you up to it. It was Arthur Hall. What difference does that make? A lot. You have nothing in common with Hall. Wouldn't you rather work for me? Definitely. But it's too late now. Why? You can't tell me that you're afraid of Hall. And I don't know what he gave you, but I'll pay you $10,000 for that gun. Fully loaded. Hmm. I don't know, Dutch. I've never done anything like this before. 
And if I did now, I wouldn't want you to think that the money you're offering had any effect on my decision. Oh, of course not. There was something about that fellow Hall that just rubbed me the wrong way. All right, Dutch. Get the dough. It was just one of those things, just one of those crazy things, one of those bells that now and then rings, just one of those. Don't stop on my account, Mr. Malone. I think you sing real pretty. Well, I always say a pretty girl deserves a pretty tune. Imagine coming into my office and finding you. How'd you get in here, anyway? I told the superintendent I was a friend of yours. Good for you. I'm glad you made yourself at home. You don't mind my taking off my shoes? Not a bit. I'd like to see people comfortable. You ought to get some better reading material. Oh, uh, you don't care for Professor Wigmore on evidence? I thought it was pretty dull. There's a racing form you overlooked. No, I didn't. It's last week. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Miss... Uh... Hall, Peggy Hall, only it's Missy. And I'm the one to be sorry. Should I put my shoes in? Why be formal? You know, Malone, you're a welcome change from most of the lawyers I know. You know many? I've got one in the family. Arthur Hall. You ever hear of him? Unfortunately. He's my husband. Oh. I once heard him say he'd never do business with you. Well, that's a wonderful recommendation. That's what I thought. Can you get me a divorce? On what grounds? Grounds? Well, this may come as a shock to you, Mrs. Hall. Thank you. But judges are peculiar people. Before they grant a divorce, they like to know if there's a reason. I've got a million of them. Will your husband contest it? I don't think so. I don't think so, either. Oh, now, look, Lieutenant, I'm busy. Oh, you're always busy, Malone. Why don't you take a little time out once? I'm not clowning, Brooks. Neither am I. Oh, uh, this lady's Peggy Hall, isn't she? How would you know? I'm a detective. Like to see how I operate? Love to. Well, first I went to your home, and the maid told me you left a message that if anybody looked for you, you'd be closeted with the legal eagle here. What? Oh, Malone, you are a devil. Look, Brooks, what are you getting at? Didn't she tell you? No, all she told me is she wanted to get rid of her husband. And she did. We just found his body. Put your shoes on, Lucy. Those stone floors at headquarters can be awfully cold on your tootsies. You're listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone. And now back to The Amazing Mr. Malone. As an old cliche, it's always darkest before the dawn. And judging by the signs here, daybreak was a way off. While Lieutenant Brooks gazed about my office, I watched my client, Peggy Hall, put on her shoes. A little thing like that can tell you a lot. To me, it proved two things. One, my client was innocent. And two, she had lovely ankles. You like what you see, Malone? I love it. Now, you're going to hate me for asking this, Peggy, but uh, did you kill your husband? I look like the kind of girl who would. Oh, you're a bounder, Malone. I know. I ought to wash my mouth out with soap. All right, lover, who do you think did it? I have no idea. But if you ask me who would have liked to... I'll amend the question. Dutch Schneider, for one. Who for two? I think Dutch ought to be enough to hold you for a while. A boy like Dutch could hold me for life. What do you have against Arthur? Arthur convinced him he was a man of influence. Oh, I get it. How much did he nick Dutch for? I really don't know. Must have been a substantial amount. Figures. That's quite an achievement to take money away from Mr. Schneider. I wonder if I could get in Dutch. I'll let you kids know if I score. All right, you guys, will you step on it? Those dice tables will never be ready in time. And where's the roulette set up? Oh, we got it here, Dutch. Well, it's doing me no good in that case. Get it open. Hello, Dutch. Why, if it isn't the amazing Mr. Malone. You mean the amazed Mr. Malone. I thought they closed you up. They did. And what's all the activity for? Well, it gives the boys something to do. I like to see them occupied. Keeps them out of trouble. Oh. What's on your mind, Counselor? Uh, can we talk someplace where there's less danger of me being hit on the head by a hammer? Sure. Come into the office. Oh, watch your step. I always try to. Sit down. Think? <laughs> Malone never says no. Soda? Just a squirt. 
There you are. Thanks. Well, salute. Salute. Hmm. All right, Malone, to what do I owe the pleasure? Well, for one thing, I was wondering whether you found a successor to Arthur Hall. Uh, successor? Well, Arthur used to represent you, didn't he? I'm glad you mentioned that, Malone. I could use a good lawyer. Wish I could think of one. And what's wrong with you? Me? Oh, I got a client. So what? So I'm afraid your interests are diametrically opposed. Well, how do you figure that? I'm representing Peggy Hall. Don't tell me the police believe she killed her husband. How did you know he was dead? From several sources. As a matter of fact, I think there was a flash on the radio about an hour ago. What did it say? Nothing much. Only that uh, someone sent a thirty-two slug through Arthur's brain in his office and the cops were holding a hot suspect, but they didn't drop any names. It's Peggy Hall. Well, now that proves that they're out of their minds. Why would Peggy kill him? Well, it seems Arthur signed everything he owned over to her, and she didn't want to give it back. That's no motive. Well, I forgot to mention that everything Arthur owned amounted to close to $100,000. Hey, you lawyers do all right. Well, there are lawyers and lawyers, Dutch. Now, Arthur had a few soft touches. He convinced a couple of clients he had political connections, and he was rooking them for a fat little fee each week. You don't have to tell me. I was one of the principal contributors. So I've heard. What gets me is why the police haven't talked to you. Well, maybe they have. What would you tell them? Obviously enough to convince them that I didn't murder Arthur. Want to try convincing me? Where's my percentage? How's your drink? Hmm? Oh, the drink? Fine, fine. Want one for the road? Oh, I'm in no hurry. I can spare another few minutes. Well, I can't. <laughs> That's okay, Dutch. You don't have to beat me over the head. I can take a hint. See you around the pool room. Hello, Dutch. Why, Kelk, you're the last man I expected to see. I hope you don't mind my dropping around. I brought over the Horowitz recording of the piano concerto. I thought maybe you'd like to compare it with the Rubenstein job. You didn't really come for that, did you, Kelk? I guess there's no use in my trying to kid you. No use at all. It's funny, Dutch. I've known you, uh, how long? Maybe 24 hours? And yet I feel that there's a, uh, a bond between us. Do you? Mm-hmm. You know me better than I do myself. For example, I used to think that I was incorruptible. Oh, come now. No, I mean it. I always prided myself that once I undertook an assignment, nothing could swerve me from my purpose. But you did, didn't you, Dutch? And you did it with money. Did I do that? Yes. You put ideas in my head. Get to the point, Kelk. Well, all I'm trying to say is that suddenly money has become tremendously important to me. So? So, I want lots of it. And do I look like Fort Knox? Well, a reasonable facsimile. I sold you your life at nine o'clock last night for ten thousand dollars. Now, that was pretty cheap, Dutch. I'll bet I could have gotten five times that. Easily, if I had that much here. Well, you better start raising it. Otherwise? Otherwise, I go to a fellow named John J. Malone. No, you wouldn't do that. Why not? I just don't think you would. Well, you're wrong, Dutch. How can I be? You admit that I know you better than you do yourself. And I don't see you going to John J. Malone. I just don't see it. Mr. Malone? Yeah? Are you busy? Who is this? My name is George Kelk. George Kelk? Yes, you don't know me, but it might be worthwhile if you did. In what respect? I know who killed Arthur Hall. Is this a rib? I'll let you judge that for yourself. What time does your office staff leave? 5.30. All right. I'll be there at 6. It'll be much easier with just the two of us. Let me see if we understand each other, Kelk. I think we do now, Malone. Are you be willing to repeat this same story in court? Why not? Well, you admitted that you'd been hired by Arthur Hall to take care of Dutch Schneider. Well, nothing happened to Dutch, did it? No. Then what can happen to me? You've got a nice logical mind. Thank you. Well, what do you think will be Dutch's reaction when he learns you've been up here? Oh, I'm not worried, Malone. I can look after myself. 
You want me to prove it? Yeah. All right. Open up your desk drawer. Why? Go on. Start with the, uh, the bottom one on the right. What are you talking about? You've got a recording machine somewhere in there, Malone. You've been taking down every bit of this dialogue. How'd you know that? Oh, you're talking to a man who keeps up with the latest in that field. I do a little home recording myself. Oh. Who, um, uh, who thought of placing the microphone in the waste paper basket? Me. Picked it up from a story I once read. Hmm, cute idea. Yeah. All right, Malone. Get away from that desk. Put away that gun, Kelk. I said get away from that desk. <laughs> How do you feel, Counselor? Uh, oh, it's too bad. Next time, remember, you're not dealing with an amateur. I never audition for free. Listen, Cal. Give him a little more water, Sussman. No, no more. Come on, Malone. No. Come on. Let me. Oh. Take it easy, chum. Something new has been added. Ah. Huh? Yeah, three stitches in your scalp. Oh. Why did you get here, Lieutenant? Oh, about an hour ago. Let me... Let me see that desk. Oh, there's nothing to see there. You'll have to buy yourself a new recorder. Listen, Brooks, a boy named George Kelk was up here. Yeah, I know. You kept babbling his name. Well, he can clear Peggy Hall. Now, look, my lord. I tell you, I had the evidence on that machine. Sure, sure. Will you stop trying to humor me? Arthur Hall originally hired this Kelk to bump Dutch Schneider. Only Dutch was lucky and bought his way out. Now, is that a strong enough motive for you? You mean for Dutch getting back at Arthur Hall? Yeah. I'd be out of my mind to say it was. Well, Kelk can prove the whole business. No, he can't. Look, Lieutenant, I talked with the man. He told me that at 9 o'clock last night, he went up and braced Dutch. Well, that's where you run into trouble. I don't see why. That's because you haven't seen the autopsy report. Arthur Hall was dead at eight. What? Yeah, that's right. A full hour before Kelk even got to Dutch. You better get the aspirin, Malone. Your headaches are just beginning. You're listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone. And now back to The Amazing Mr. Malone. Georgie Kelk made me sick. Lieutenant Brooks wasn't exactly what the doctor ordered either. When I refused to believe that Arthur Hall was killed an hour before Kelk even met Dutch Schneider, the lieutenant showed it to me in black and white. Say, uh, Malone, now will you behave? When did this autopsy report come through? Around 6.15 tonight. Why didn't you call me? I tried to, but you were out. Well, you could have left... Oh. You got any other leads? No. Your client, Mrs. Hall, still refuses to tell us what she did with the gun. What gun? The one she bought three months ago in a pawn shop. Why? Well, to hear her tell it, she was afraid with Arthur away from home so often. That's possible. Sure, sure. But why'd she buy it under a phony name? She's a woman. Oh, of course. That explains everything. Well, how'd you finally run it down? Through the car. The pawnbroker remembered she was driving a Nash. She got the first four numbers of the license. Pretty observant boy. What kind of a gun was it? A police special. Is that what was used on Hall? Could be. The slug we pried out of the wall was too battered to tell. Look, Lieutenant, Peggy didn't kill her husband. It's all out of character. Oh, that's good, that is. You've spent all of 60 minutes with the girl and already you've got her analyzed. I tell you, I... Wait a minute. Oh, I'm the original idiot, boy. Well, I've been saying that for years. Where's Peggy now? Oh, where would she be? Well, i got to see her immediately. Why? I just thought of something, and the way my mind is functioning lately, I can't take a chance of forgetting it. Shall we go? <laughs> Anything I can do, Peggy, anything at all, I want you to let me know. Thank you, Dutch, but I can't think of a thing. Malone's taking care of everything. Well, much as I dislike the guy, I've got to admit he's capable, but if you want anybody else... Open him up, sir. Hello, Peggy. Malone, what happened to you? Oh, I, uh, I used my head when I shouldn't have. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you had company. That's all right, Counselor. I'm leaving. Oh, don't on my account, Dutch. The lieutenant here has a call out for Georgie Kelk. Kelk? Hadn't you heard he was up to see me tonight? I didn't think he would. Why not? I didn't think he knew anything about Arthur's murder. You're right. He didn't. Hey, Malone, you said there was something you wanted to ask Mrs. Hall. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you reminded me, Lieutenant. I almost forgot again. You got any plans for tonight, Peggy? 
That's not funny, Malone. No, I'm serious. I'd like to take you out. Hey, haven't I got anything to say about that? But don't get me wrong, Lieutenant. With the housing shortage what it is, I wouldn't leave you with an empty room. Mr. Schneider can move in and take her place. How about that, Dutch? What are you trying to say, Malone? You killed Arthur Hall. There, I said it, and I'm glad. I can't believe it, Malone. Can't believe what? That Schneider killed Arthur. Suit yourself, Peggy, but it obviously had to be one of you. Well, in that case, I'm glad you picked on Dutch. What convinced you he was guilty? That gun you mislaid. Hmm? Lieutenant Brooks said it was a police special, and that's a thirty-eight caliber job. What does that prove? Well, when I asked Brooks if he was positive the bullet was fired from a police special, he admitted they couldn't tell for sure. So? So how come when I first went to see Dutch Schneider, he knew definitely it was a thirty-two? Oh, Dutch must have had inside information. The very best. After the raid on his club, Dutch went to your home and beat the devil out of Arthur. Why didn't he kill him then? Arthur must have promised to return the money he got from him. Well, how could Arthur do that? He'd signed over practically everything he owned to me. Sure. And then when Dutch realized he had no chance of recouping, he went to your husband's office and killed him there. But in between, Arthur hired Georgie Kelk. By the time Kelk located Dutch, Arthur was dead. Should I say I'm sorry? Well, not if you don't feel like it. But, uh... You don't want to let this prejudice you against all men. Oh, it won't. I know now the type I can handle. And when I see one of the other kind, I'm going to start running. How will you recognize the other kind, huh? That's easy. They're lawyers. Good night, Mr. Malone. Well, like the man says, that's all there is, there ain't no more. Which merely means that this is the last Malone show in the current series. If you want us back, all you gotta do is say the word. When it comes to that department, you're the judge and jury. So here's hoping you'll be dropping us a line at the office and that the verdict will be a favorable one. Good night and good luck. George Petrie was starred as John J. Malone with Larry Haynes as Lieutenant Brooks. Our program is written by Eugene Wang and directed by Richard Lewis. The Amazing Mr. Malone is based on a famous character created by Craig Rice and produced by Bernard L. Schubert. The events in this story were fictional and any resemblance to persons living or dead is entirely coincidental. Fred Collins speaking. The Amazing Mr. Malone has come to you from New York. Stay tuned for The Man Called X over most NBC stations. Thank you.